Hey guys, thanks for joining me up to another Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to take a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Ghost Patrix. This is a new one from Innocent Traveler Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly one and a half to two and a half hours to play, and it's a fully cooperative game, so everybody is working together to defeat the scenario they've chosen to go on. So in this video, I'm going to take you through a playthrough of the game, the first scenario, showing you the first couple, middle couple, and end couple turns, so you have a good idea how the game plays and progresses to decide whether or not you want to back this title. I'll also have a link up in the top corner if you just want to see an overview of the game to give you an idea of the main features and how the game plays. Check that video out as well. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference, helps me continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this is all about. Before moving into the game, the last thing I want to mention again is that all of the materials I'm using here today are prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better once the production is done on this. From there, we're going to go ahead and move on into the game. So the first step in the game is to go through your starting equipment guide and select the equipment based on the parameters. I went ahead and did that and gave it off to the family members that I wanted to give it to already. From there, then there's also a narrative with each of the campaign scenarios, and you will go ahead and read that for the group. I am not going to do that as I don't want to spoil all the different little things for you guys. So then the last thing we're going to do is go over the objective. So in this particular scenario, there are five objectives, and the first one is to find the door to the basement. So with this, it says during the draw phase, you're going to draw, if you draw the locked door token, and then during the spawn phase on the map tile for which the token was drawn, add a locked door standee to the wall without a door. And then complete the spawning phase or fight phase if applicable. And once you're complete, then you'll go ahead and flip that over. So we have not found the locked door yet, and so that is our first goal. So then we're going to go ahead and move on in. So the first phase is the exploring phase. So our family is in this room, and they get to explore this room and basically you want to position the family so that one of them isn't next to the doorway so that you can explore the next room and then the other family members you want to position them in a stance to get ready for whatever is in that next room if there's enemies or whatnot so we're going to go ahead and start off with bill here he's going to be next to the doorway so that we trigger that effect and then our other characters will go ahead and have joan be right next to him maddox will be up in the top corner here and joan uh evelyn will be back here now that a family member is next to the door, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is drawing a map tile. So we have 4A, so again, we're gonna go ahead and place that tile based on that number. So 4A matches our tile down here. And then we can place that any way we want so that the doorways line up. So we could do this, or we could have it up like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and have it this way. And that'll take care of our map token, so we can remove that. And then we're going to draw the top three tokens from that, from the fate stack and resolve them in order. So we have a door, a monster group, and a treasure. All right. So then we're going to go into the spawning phase. So first off, we're going to spawn a door in next to the doorway. And then we will handle the monster group. So again, based on the mission you've chosen to play. So mission guide one, we're going to check monster group two is going to spawn a guard dog and a Bennett lackey. So we'll go ahead and do that. We have a Bennett lackey for number one and one guard dog as well. In order to spawn our enemies, we're going to use uh, the different directions based on the dice rolls. So this is a six by six room. So we'll roll the D6 for the latitude longitude. So we'll start off with the guard dog and it's a three. So we'll go three down, one, two, three, and over four. One, two, three, four, which lands him on the couch, which is an obstacle. So he would move back until there's an open space and he's going to face the direction of the family. So we'll go ahead and turn him like that so you guys can see which way he's facing. Now, in the 
production copy already, I did talk with the designer and they are going to add borders around items that are obstacles and rooms. So it'll be a little easier for people to identify what is considered an obstacle and what is not. And there's also going to be other effects in the room that I talked about with the designer as well. And he said he's going to add different effects of some of the rooms, such as the fireplace will add a really neat effect as well. So definitely some changes that are already in the process of being made after the prototype was designed. So our lackey is going to go next and a one. So he's all the way in the back and another one. So he is all the way in the back corner here. All right, so that is the spawning of the enemies. And then we have to add their cards out as well. So we have our lackey there. He has six hit points. And he does come with his own weapon card. So we'll draw a weapon card for the humanish. So he has a white picket fence post. All right. And then we'll go ahead and do the dog as well. So we have a guard dog. And the guard dog has four hit points. And they also come with a weapon. So we'll draw a beastie card for them. And it is Snaggletooth. All right. So then we would place this next to the area so that we'll pick that up once we're all done with this encounter. We'll go ahead and discard the rest of those tokens. And then we'll go ahead and move into the pre-combat phase. Now there is another step in there. If you would have drawn no rooms, you'll have to resolve another room draw. Or if you drew extra rooms then or extra doorways, you would actually have found a hidden room. And then some of the rooms are also going to have multiple doorways, which will split your effects. So you'll have to split your map tiles evenly and your fate tokens evenly between those two areas. So it'll branch off in different directions where the family will have to make decisions on which path they want to go. So then we're going to go ahead into the combat phase. So the first part of the combat phase, at the beginning of the first round, you have a pre-combat where each of the players can do an action that is not an attack or move action. So with the family members, a lot of them are going to either choose to do offensive or defensive actions to get them ready for combat. One other thing we have to draw for our different enemies are targets. So we have to figure out who they're going after. So the guard dogs are going to go after... Evelyn and the Bennett Lackey is going to go after Bill. So now that we have that established, we can decide how we want to do this. And so Evelyn, she will go ahead and the guard dog is one, two, three, four, five. He can potentially reach her, so she's going to go ahead and be defensive. So this will give her an additional die when she rolls defense. We have Joan here who's going to go offensive along with Bill. And Maddox will also go offensive. From there we're ready to move into the attack phase proper. So during that each of our characters will alternate. We'll start off with one of the characters of our choice. Then we will move into one of the groups. So it would be the guard dogs first. Then we would move back into our player's turn for one of our characters to go. Then it would go back to another enemy group and then back to our characters. And this will continue going until all the characters and enemy groups have gone. So with Bill here, he is going to go ahead and start off. Let's go ahead and do a move action. So his speed is five. So we're going to go one, two, three and get him right in front of the dog. Now, there are benefits to getting behind the model. So with this situation, you do have the backside there. So we will definitely make sure that we can try to take advantage of that in future turns. So then Bill is going to perform an attack action. So he's going to receive dice based on the weapon that he has. So he's going to get a light green die. He's also going to get a light green die for his character. And then if he gets any bonus dice here, now there is another change to this chart. You'll notice that it says turquoise. Those dice have been eliminated and they are going to be represented by light green. So he would receive another one for that. And then he's going to move that track back down as once he uses it, it is spent. Now he's also going to check his strength for a melee attack. So he's going to add the light orange die to that as well. And then finally, the enemy is going to add their defense die, which is the tan die. 
So we'll go ahead and give this all a roll and see what we get here. All right, so the enemy did not roll anything, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we're looking for a number of star marks based on the enemy. So the enemy's agility is one, so we just need one star. So we got that, we're good there. And then if we have any diamonds, we can spend those either on our weapon stats or any other items that we have. So with the star or the diamond, we have a choice. We can add an additional damage or we can do a stumble, which would push that enemy one space away. And we're doing two damage. So we could either do three damage to the dog or we can push him one space further, which could potentially get him out of range of, of Evelyn. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll do the push or the stumble, so that'll shove him, and we're going to do two damage as well. So we're going to take two hit points off of him. Then it would move over to the first enemy group. So the guard dogs are going to go, and so they're going to move one, two, three. As they're clipping through a corner, it costs some additional action point. Four, five, six. So at this point, they're between two characters, so they have to do a random determination of who they're going after, so we'll see. Nope, let's try again. And Joan is going to be the target of the dog. So from here, then we'll gather up their thing. They get the light green die. The dog is also going to get a light blue. And they're going to use the light yellow die for damage. Now with Joan, she is going to be using the tan colored die as well for defense. So hopefully she'll get something here. No, she did not. The dog did score a hit and her agility is one as well. So it is a successful hit. Now he did roll two diamonds. So with that, he is going to be attached. So let me get that token out. So then this is going to go onto Joan and she is going to be attached. So that means that the dog is simply going to continue attacking her until either the dog is eliminated or target is changed. So that was one diamond. Then we also have a second diamond, which will trigger the weapons ability as well, which is an additional damage. So with that, it's going to do a total of two damage to Joan. So she'll take two hit points off. All right, that was all of the dogs as there was only one. So then we're back over to our family members to decide who's going to go next. So let's go ahead and have, let's have Evelyn go next and try to finish off that dog. So with her, she has a range based on her accuracy plus three. So she has a range of four spaces. So she has range to the dog and she has a speed of six. So let's go ahead and move her up. One, two, three, four. That'll get her behind the dog as his backside will be exposed now to her. So she's going to bump up her damage for that. And then she's going to go ahead and gather up those dice. So she is going to get a green. She'll get a light blue. And she is going normally going to get that light yellow. But because she's behind, she's going to bump that up to dark yellow. And then again, the dog will receive his tan die for defense. All right, and that was a complete bust. No luck at all. So that was a failed attack. And then it'll move back over to our enemies. So the lackey's gonna go next. He is going to be targeting Bill. So he's gonna move next to Bill there and perform an attack. So with him, he's gonna get a dark green. He'll also get the light green. Uh, another light green because of the turquoise dye is not being used and a light yellow. And then Bill has the dark brown defense die for him. All right, so unfortunately, Bill did not roll anything on there, but the, the lackey also did not roll any stars, so the attack does not hit and do any damage, as he would have rolled three damage. So that would have been really nasty. So we got lucky there. Then we're back to our characters, so we still have Maddox and Joan to go. So Joan's going to go next. She's going to go ahead and try to attack that dog as well. She's going to go ahead and start off by getting that dark green die. She'll get a light green die. And she's going to receive another light green die for that. 
she is going to be doing dark yellow damage and the dog will get his tan die. And nothing again, a complete miss. So then she still has one more action remaining. So she's going to go ahead and spend that to do another offensive stance to hopefully get her ready for the next round. Now we don't have any other enemies to go, so we're back over to our family members to do that. So Maddox is going to go next. He's going to go ahead and try his little squirt gun on the dog there to see if he can do damage. So he's going to get a dark green, a light blue, and his accuracy is going to be the dark one there. And he also went ahead and got a bonus die, and then the dog gets its tan. And he got a hit. Nice. And he's got a bunch of weapon abilities too. So let's see what he's got with his weapon. He has a status effect. So with this one, he's going to trigger that and it's going to do an additional point of damage. So let me mark that real quick. And then it does cause spirit damage, but our dog is not susceptible to spirit damage. So it doesn't affect it there. But the weapon itself does not as, is not as effective, so it's going to do one less damage. So we're going to do three damage to the dog. And he only has two hit points left, so the dog has been eliminated. The character or family member that eliminates an enemy is going to place that enemy on their board. And they also receive a bonus die during the next round. So at this point, all, everybody is gone. So at the end of the round, we have to roll a d6 to determine if any other bad effects happen. If we roll a 1, then a family member has to take either a 1 health or uh, FP damage. We did not, so we're good there. And so because we're still in combat with an enemy, we go right back into another round of combat. And so our characters are going to go again. So again, we get to choose who's going to start the round off. The one other thing I did forget last time is Maddox still had one other action, so he's going to go ahead and spend that to build a firework. In order to do that, he is going to have to spend one of his FPs. So he'll have four left, and then we're back in it to this round. So moving into the round, let's go ahead... Let's go ahead and have Bill go. He's going to go behind our lackey here. So it's going to cost him two to move through and then one to come out the backside. So he is behind our enemy now. So that'll bump him up. Hopefully he's going to hit. We're going to go ahead and get his two light greens. We're going to also spend a token for our pack of cinnamon gum. That is going to get us an additional green. So we'll be rolling at least three. So hopefully that'll be enough. And we get the dark orange die for the attack so hopefully we'll roll good here let's find out Ugh, nothing and the enemy would have dodged one of our successes anyway so even if we would have gotten one he still would have been able to wiggle out of that so no damage was done and then it's over to the enemy who is targeting bill so he's going to go ahead and turn around and target bill so Bill's going to get his dark brown, and our enemy is going to receive the dark green, light green, and another light green in the light yellow die. All right, so Bill rolled a defense. The enemy, again, did not successfully hit. Otherwise, he would have done a little bit of damage there. So we were getting lucky here. Our enemies aren't hitting anything. Nice. So then it's back over to our family members. So Joan is going to go ahead and move up. Actually, let's go with Maddox first. So he's going to move one, two. That way then he is behind the enemy. And he gets the dark green, light blue. And he's going to get that bonus die in there as well. He is behind the enemy, so he's going to be rolling the light orange. And the enemy gets their defense as always. All right. Okay, so he did hit a couple times. He rolled one diamond, which isn't going to do enough to get that additional effect in there. And the enemy did not roll anything. So he's going to do three damage, minus the one for the squirt gun. So he does two points of damage in the end. Not too bad. Got a couple of points on the, the lackey. Then it'll move over to our next family member. So... Uh, we'll have Evelyn go next, so she's going to get the light green and light blue for those two. She did lose that defensive die. 
and she is going to spend an action to do that first. So we'll do this. And with that, she gets to roll two of those. So she's going to roll two dark yellow, and she'll take the highest. So hopefully she's going to connect here and potentially do some, some good damage. She does connect. Both of them came up three, and it's going to change the enemy's targeting. So we're going to have to reveal another token, and it's switching over to Joan. So when that happens, if that character, if the enemy is attacking and that happens, they actually attack that character instead. But this is our character attacking, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to do three damage to the lackey. So he's almost done. One more damage will finish him off. So then we're going to move over to Joan to go. So she's going to go ahead and move one, two, three, four behind our lackey and use her dagger. So she's going to get the dark green and light green dies. She does have the turquoise, so she'll get another light green. Our lackey will get his tan, and she is normally going to do the dark yellow, but because she's behind him, she's going to get that light orange. So she hits many, many times. Nice. And... She does get that one diamond, which isn't enough to trigger the blade's additional ability. The first one only takes effect if she didn't roll any successes, which she did. So three damage, that will drop the lackey. He's going to go onto her board. She's going to get an extra bonus die for her next round, and that will finish that off. So that is it for the, for the enemies here. So our characters have completed the combat round. So during a campaign play, at the end of the round, there's an extra step where they're going to total up and gain experience points based on the enemies that they faced. And they're also going to get some money that they can spend later on as well. I'm not going to calculate that with this. And that's the other reason why you put enemies on there, because the characters that defeated enemies would actually get bonus experience as well that they can spend later on to boost up different skills and abilities. Again, moving back into the beginning of the sequence. So our character will move. And because we finished the combat before we had to go through, we do not have to roll that die again to determine what happens. Oh, one other thing I almost forgot before we move on, we do have to resolve the treasure too. So based on the number of enemies, we're going to draw a number of drop cards. So we had the one enemy group, so we're going to get one drop card for that and that. We'll also get that, so we'll reveal these. So we got instant bonus. We get two chocolate bars to distribute to the family members. One is going to recover one FP. So we'll go ahead and give that to Maddox. And the other is going to recover a health. So we're definitely going to give that to Joan because she has taken some damage. So that'll help her out. Now we also get to draw a brown a card from the brown equipment deck. So we found a cricket bat, basically. So with this, we get to choose a character that receives it. So let's go ahead and give it to Bill. This is going to give him a little bit of a boost for his attack. And then he can put this in his inventory. And you can sell items later on as well. Then we also have the treasure item that we have to resolve. So with the treasure one, we'll go to our book again. And we get to draw a, another card from the brown deck deck so with this one we have a worn hazmat helmet so this is nice it's going to help us work our way towards a resistance uh, it's only a third of the way and if we get two other thirds we get to roll another brown die so that's going to be pretty handy so we'll go ahead and give it to bill he's kind of our tanky kind of guy so we're gonna have him take that so that resolve that token and then we're ready to move on so again our family is going to move next to the door there Joan will go up, we'll have Maddox over here, and Evelyn will be in front of that couch there. So again, then uh, we'll move off to from the exploring phase into the draw phase. So we'll reveal this token for the door. We have 7A, so let's go ahead and pull that out. So 7A, we'll position this way. And then we'll draw three tokens for it. So we have a trap, some enemies, and a surprise. 
So we did not draw any other doors, so we are going to have to resolve that one empty room there. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. So we reveal another map tile, so that's a 2A. And let's, we have to position it this way, so let's slide this down a little bit. And three more tokens for that. So there's one, two, three. There's another door. Oh, and this one found two doors and a treasure. So then we'll go ahead and set those up real quick. So we have the enemy group four. So let me see what that is. Again on our board. So group four is going to be two rabid ferrets. So we got some angry ferrets out there. Then we will resolve the trap. So let's put the trap out again. So we have a three, four. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Again, the trap cannot be on an object, so it'll be on here. It will not trigger the enemy. They have to be stumbled into it to trigger it. And then finally, we'll resolve that. So that is a surprise event. So again, we'll resolve, we'll check our book. And with 7A, there's a knock on the front door. Who's there? Roll a D6. So let's see what we get here. A 1, 2, nobody, but somebody or someone or something did leave a gift on the doorstep. Draw a item card. So we have buttered popcorn. So this is going to gain one star to self or an adjacent F, uh, FM. So nice. So this is a really good ability. So we'll go ahead and give it to... Uh, Joan there. So we've resolved all three tokens there. And then let's resolve these. So we have a doorway. So we'll place one there. We have a treasure. And then we have a second doorway. And we don't have any openings. So we actually found a hidden room. So you would place the doorway along one of the walls that does not have an open door. So we'll just place that over here between those two sections. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take a turn off camera, and we will be back in, in a couple turns to show you guys some more progress. Moving back in, our characters were able to find that secret room and even found an item out of it. They got the garlic-enriched holy water, which is really cool, and is going to hopefully help them out. It uh, adds an additional damage, so it's going to negate that effect from the squirt gun there. And they were able to fight off the little ferrets that were in there. So at this point, then we're going to move back into the game. So we're going to go ahead and open that doorway and find out what is behind it. So our next map tile is 1A. So we have another bathroom we've found. And we get three tokens for that. So we have the locked doorway. All right. Monster group one and a trap. So let's go ahead and spawn. So we'll move into the spawning step of it. So we're going to go ahead and place that locked doorway. And that will go into a non-doorway area. And we do have to resolve another room token because of that effect. Then we're going to go ahead and take care of the other two things. So again, let's go ahead and take care of that other room. So we have a 5A. And we'll draw three more tokens for that. So first one is another door. Monster group three and treasure four. So monster group one is going to be one lackey. So that takes care of that part. And then we also have that other room over there. So again, we'll have a door token placed. Take care of that. And we have monster group three. So let me see what that one is. It's going to be two guard dogs, so we'll bring those out. Then we are going to go ahead and move into combat itself. So again, our characters will prepare. Evelyn will bump up with offense. Joan will go offense. I think they're all going to go offense. We're not too shabby here, so let's go ahead and get on into it. So we can go with our family members first. So Bill's going to go ahead and go first. He's going to go ahead and move behind our zombie our lackey here. He's going to get the light blue. He'll get a green plus the two bonus green from our bonus dies there. And he's going to bump up to the dark orange. And the lackey will get their tan as usual. 
Woof. So the lackey did not get anything, and we rolled three hits, more than enough. We do cripple, so we'll add a cripple token to him, which basically means he cannot move during his next round. And we did four damage to him as well, so Bill really whacked him. All right. Then we'll move over. The lackey will be the first to go. And so he's going to go ahead and turn around and try to attack Bill. So he's going to get three light green and a light yellow. Bill will get his dark brown. And unsuccessful. There was no stars, so no hit there. So Bill lucked out. He must have dodged that pretty good. Then we'll move back over to our family members. So Maddox will go next. He's got that squirt gun that could do some pretty good damage. So let's see what happens. We get the light green or light blue, dark green. He's going to get two bonus die from our bonus token there. Uh, the guy turned around, so he is in the rear. So he's going to get the orange die, and we have the tan for the enemy. We got a hit, one damage. The enemy did not do anything, but we also have four of those, so we'll be able to activate that. So we're going to go ahead and activate the weapon, so we're going to get an additional damage out of that, so that'll bump us up to two. We do have the holy water, which is also going to bump us up to three, but that'll bring us back down from the squirt guns effect and then we also have the spirit damage to these to the lackey who has a weakness to that so that's going to add an additional point of damage there so we've done three points which is enough to bring our lackey down so that'll go to maddox he gets an extra die these will be moved off and then we can move on. So again, the dogs will go. They're going to move six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. The dog's turn is done. So then we're back over to our characters. So we have Joan, who's going to go. One, two, three, four, five. That'll get her there. She's going to get a dark green, a light green. And two extra from the bonus. She'll be rolling the dark yellow. And the dog will get the tan. She got a hit. She does one damage. And she has two stars, so she's going to do a bleed two. So it's going to take damage over time. So we got bleed two on dog two. So put that there. And... That's it for that, and one damage, so we'll take one off of there. All right, and then finally we'll move over to Evelyn, so she can move up one, two, three, four. She'll go there. Now she'll move up one more. So she's there, and then she's going to go ahead and attack, so she's going to get that light green and light blue. She'll get two bonus light greens for those, and she's going to be using the light yellow. So she hits but doesn't do any damage. Well, she has the one star, so she can do one damage with that. So some damage is better than no damage. So one damage to our dog there. All right, that is the end of the round. So I'll go ahead and roll and see if there's any effects that happen. No, we're okay with a six. So then we'd head back into another round of combat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off camera and we'll be back to resolve that in just a second. Okay, so our family members got really lucky. We ended up picking up the Super Soaker shotgun and I gave it to Maddox. So he'll hopefully be doing some more damage. And then I went ahead and gave his pistol over to Joan so that she has some versatility between close combat and ranged attacks. So then our family is ready to move into the next round. They are next to that locked door. So we're gonna get it to complete that first objective. So flipping it over, it says an objective complete. There, Evelyn points towards the door to the fungin and scratched on it. We are coming for you, bro. So with this one, this we discard it and read objective two. So objective two is to open the door to the basement. At the end of the exploration phase, if at least one family member is adjacent to the door, 
to the basement, you're going to read story 1.2. So let me do that real quick. So 1.2, from beyond the door, the family hears strange, unaccounted sounds, muffled, chanting, and even faint giggling. But the door won't budge, even after several solid kicks to the door handle. Footsteps and shuffling from the floor above draws each of their attentions. There's only one way to go, Joan says, while looking at the ceiling. Hold on a little longer, sweetie. We will be back for you. As the family turns away from the basement door, two disheveled Men barge into the room. There, hurt, grunts the less ugly one. The family nervously clutches their crude weapons and exchanges glances. A quick nod is shared as they charge into battle to save Richie. All right, so from there, then we go ahead and complete objective two. We're going to spawn two lackeys in the map tile adjacent to the doorway from which the family entered the room. Now, once that is done, then we would go ahead and move on to reading objective three so let's go ahead and set that up real quick so we have our lackeys so again then our family would go into their prep phase so evelyn is going to go ahead and gain a offensive stance so is maddox joan will do the same and well bill will do the same as well so then we're ready to move into the round so bill is going to go ahead and move He's going to move one, two, three here in front of this one to protect his son. And he's going to go ahead and attack that second guy there. So he's going to get the light blue and light green. He'll also get in a bonus light green from our stat here. He gets the light orange and enemy two does not have that extra bonus. So it's only going to get the one tan. So we got, wow, we got a lot of hits in there. The enemies don't have, didn't have any effect. So we're going to do two damage to that one there. And then it'll move on to the enemies. So our enemy one is going to target Maddox. So he's going to move to be over here. So we'll plop him up. Maddox is going, to, the enemy is going to get a two, three light green and a light yellow. Maddox will get his tan color dye. And the enemy does hit, but does not do any damage. And it does roll a effect, but not enough diamonds to activate its ability. So it is gonna cause him to stumble one, so it'll push him back one space. All right. Then we are on to enemy two is going to target Bill. So enemy two will get the light green and or light blue and two light green and that one. And Bill will get his dark brown. All right. So Bill rolled a dodge, which drops this down to a single star, which is still a successful hit. And the enemy does roll one, but again, it does not activate that. Bill does have a defense there, so it's going to drop that down to one damage on Bill. And the enemy is going to push him back one space with the stumble. So at this point, then uh, I will go back to our family members. Maddox is going to go. He's going to target that enemy number two with his super soaker gun and see if we can do some damage here. So he gets the light blue and the green. He's also going to get two light green dies. And he is going to get the dark yellow. And the enemy is going to receive the tan die. So nice solid hit there. Drop that back down. He did roll two diamonds. So we have some choices. We can either stumble the enemy two spaces or we can do that bonus damage. So yeah, we're definitely going to do the bonus damage from that. So it'll trigger his effect, which is also going to trigger the holy water. And so that is going to bump him up one from the effect, one from the holy water being because the lackey is weak to it and then he also has the plus one from that as well so that's five damage to the enemy more than enough to take care of him so super soaker's paying off all right so that enemy has been eliminated maddox will gain that token and we're back into it with the other family guys so joan's gonna go she is behind him 
And she has a tough choice to make here. She could go with the dagger and try to, to stab him in the back, but she does have that gun that could do the spirit damage in that as well. So both are pretty good choices. So she's going to go ahead and activate, let's, let's go with the knife. So we've got our two there. She's going to get two additional with her bonus. She is going to get that orange because she's in the enemy's back, but it is going to get two tan dice because of its jacket. All right, so it, it rolled really well. She uh, It's going to block that one success. So because of that, she does have the diamond, which she can use the dagger for, so that's good. It is going to cause her to lose her bonus to die, so she's going to have to reroll with what she has here. All right, so again, it dodges, so it is going to be a missed attack. Unfortunately, otherwise, she would have done some pretty good damage. So then, that is her turn, and finally, we have Evelyn to go. Or she went already. So that is all of our characters. So then again, we'll roll that die to determine if anything happens in the round. A one, so somebody is going to take a hit. So we'll take it from Joan. And then we're back into it. So our family will have to make some decisions here. And Maddox is going to go. He's going to move over one, two, three up here and take a shot at the lackey so he's going to get the green he is in the front now so he'll only get the yellow and he is going to get that bonus light green die for that then lackey will get his two and let's see what happens here the lackey missed completely and we did two damage and we do activate a ability here, so stumble two. And he stumbles into the trap, which triggers. So that's going to cause an additional point of damage. So the enemy is going to take two from him, one from the trap for three, plus one for the holy water for four. So the enemy's down to two hit points, and it's caused bleed two. So at the end of the enemy's activation, he's also going to take an additional hit po or point of damage. All right, so that is Maddox's turn. So the enemy is going to go, and he is going to go after Maddox. So he's going to move one, two in front of him. The enemy is going to get a light, three light green, and a light yellow. And Maddox will get his tan die. So he missed. The enemy got two diamonds, but no successful hits, so no damage. And then again, the enemy is going to take that one point from the bleed, and that'll flip over to bleed one. So then we'll move on to our next family member. So Evelyn will go. She is going to receive two light green and a light blue, the light yellow, and the enemy is going to get his two tan. So he does avoid one, but she does not connect with that point of damage. And she will go ahead and do an offensive stance for her second action. So then we'll go ahead and move over to Joan. Well, let's go ahead and go with Bill. So he's going to come from behind him, move over, and he'll take a swing. So he's going to get that light blue and light green. He gets the dark orange, and the enemy gets their two defense. Rolls a shield, but he does not connect, so no damage done from that. And then Joan will go. So she's going to activate her healing ability first and heal one green to Bill. And it also adds an additional one to that, so he gets two health back. And then her second action, she will go ahead and attack. So she's going to get that dark green light green and she is in his rear so she's going to get the light orange and he'll get his two defense she got the hit that she needed and she does one damage which is just enough to finish him off all right so at this point then we will get our drop deck card and we get to draw another brown equipment card so let's see what we get 
we have the Hardened Lucky Prune. Oh boy. All right, so let's go ahead and give this to, and then we'll remove this. Joan was the one that finished him off, so she's gonna get that bonus token, and then we'll resolve the rest of the objective. So with that one, we have defeated all the monsters. So we flip it over, and we're gonna read story 1.3. So quick, take their weapons, Bill exhaustedly demands as he wipes the sweat from his brow. Carefully, though, make sure you don't poke yourself. As Bill picks up one of the crude, crooked weapons, his hand slowly begins to twitch, then vibrate, and then shake violently until it clinks back to the ground. Bill looks at his hand, stunned. Dad, I wouldn't touch anything else these people have handled. Evelyn says, now, come on, Richie needs us. So then we're going to shuffle in 8A into the map stack. All right, so that'll finish off that part. So flip this over and move on to objective four. So find the staircase. So we need to find 8A. So we'll wait and see what happens there. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out here and we'll go be back in a couple minutes in a couple rounds. So moving back into the game, we found 8A. So it is the staircase. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to objective four. I went ahead and drew these tokens for the room itself as well. So it says to draw three fate tokens as normal for the map tile 8A. However, only spawn treasure tokens and trap tokens and discard the rest. So our other two will be discarded and we'll just spawn that trap token. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And it is going to be seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three. So right in front of our family members. Then add a door standing to the new doorway. Finally, during exploring phase, place each family member in a row in the first row on 8A adjacent to the doorway. So with this, we're going to go ahead and spawn Wade. And he'll go in a, in a random space adjacent to the staircase. So let's see which one he goes into is three. So he's going to be right there. Then we're going to read story four. Well, I'll be. These here's have deceived me. We have a couple of folks lost here in our humble haunted house. An imposing sweaty man in a white tank top and fogged over glasses slowly descends the staircase. He scratches his ear. Did you all accidentally take a left out of the swamp room? Not, no worries. Happens all the time. We still need to fix the exit. Follow me, kind folk, and I'll get you to safety back on the road. Let me first grab you a couple of free passes for the next to... Uh... We're here for our son, Joan cries. He, we know he's downstairs. Open the door now. He takes a bite off a crunchy bone-shaped cookie. Sweet sugar lips. Why so gloom? Such a gorgeous night for a gorgeous lady, I might add. The man wipes his brow and removes his glasses. Sure we can go down there. Me and my friends here will show you around. The man whistles. Dual pipples descend the stairs behind him. All three begin to growl. Snare. The name's Estes Wade Bennett, my lady, and I'll be the last gentleman of the fine Midwest you'll have the pleasure to meet. All right. So then we're back over here. We're going to spawn two guard dogs. So let's go ahead and get out our enemies real quick. So, and then we also are going to spawn two large rat traps. So let's go ahead and start with our first one. Oof. So we've got lots of traps all around here. All right. Then we're ready to move on in. We have to do our prep phase. So Bill will move up. I think everybody's going to move up initially here. We're going to have Maddox go anyway. So he's going to move one two there and he'll take a shot with uh, his super soaker shotgun so he's going to get the light blue dark green he's going to receive a light green and he's going to be firing off the this and the dog will get its defense so no luck there it is going to change targets though and target him instead so that is dog two. Well, actually, it just does a new draw. So it's going to be Evelyn again. So it's focused on her. 
Uh, Wade is going to be our next one to go. So he's going to move. He has a movement of five. One, two, three, four. And he's going to do an attack. So he gets the dark blue and dark yellow die. He also has the light green from the mop. And then Bill is going to have his dark brown. So we've got no successes. So we, he was able to miss. Let's make sure we don't have anything here. So the following are only activated if no hits are rolled. So that's not good. So we have Sikkim. Random guard dog within range immediately attacks its targets. So currently neither one of the guard dogs are in range of their targets. And then we get to spawn another guard dog because of, of the other two diamonds that came up. So then we're on to the next character. So Bill is going to go. He is going to use his... Bats, so he gets a light green and light blue. He gets an extra green for that. And he's going to spend a token for an additional. So he gets another green for that. And our Wade guy gets the dark brown for defense. So let's see what happens here. So he rolled a dodge. So one of those goes away, but he still had one there. And he got a diamond as well, so he's going to cripple him. And he does four damage, so nice. We're down to six. All right, then the dogs are going to activate. Uh, well, before they do, he has a second action, so he's going to go ahead and spend his one of his tokens so that he can give his protection to Joan and help her out. So she'll get to roll a brown then. Then the dogs are going to activate, so our dog one is going to move in front of Joan, or dog three, and attack her. So the dog is going to get a dark green and a light blue and light yellow. Joan will get her tan as usual, and she gets that brown from Bill. All right, so she got two defense. And she rolled a dodge, so the dog's attack is going to miss. The second dog here is one, two, three, four, and will attack Joan. So we have a green, the light blue again, and the light yellow, and Joan will get her two. So she rolled the dodge to negate that, which is really good. That was real fortunate, otherwise that dog would have done... Pretty good damage to her, and it is going to change its targeting to Maddox. So she still has to resolve that attack, so she did. And then the final dog is going to move one, two, and it's not going to be able to get in there, so it's going to move over towards Maddox and attack him. And it does roll a successful hit and does three damage, and it's attached now, too. So not good for Maddox. Then we're on to the rest of our family members. So we have Joan to go if she wants to go next. Or we have Evelyn. So let's go with Evelyn. She'll go ahead and move. That's two, three, four. She'll move behind the dog and she'll do an attack. So she's going to get the three light green and a light blue. She's going to get the light orange, and the dog will get the tan. It does roll the dodge and negates that attack. So no luck there. And then Joan is our last to go. So she's going to go ahead and move. One, two, three, four, five. Next to Maddox. And she's going to go ahead and try to heal him. So she heals him one point. Oop, wrong guy. All right, then we'll resolve the end of the round effect. So we're going to go ahead and roll. Nothing there. And so we're back into the, the round again at the top of the order. I'm worried about Maddox because it's attached to him. So let's go ahead and go with him. He has got the light green, dark green for those. 
and he's got the dark yellow and our dog gets the tan. So we got a hit and a diamond. And he's doing one damage with the pist or the soap super soaker. It is going to get one diamond, so he can do the stumble two, which is going to push the dog into the jar large rat trap, which is going to do an additional point of damage to it. So right now we got one damage from that. We get one from the holy water, and we get one from the rat trap. So we're up to three points on that. It is no longer attached to Maddox, and it's crippled for two rounds, so it cannot move for a couple rounds. So that's bought us a little bit of time. Then we'll move over. Wade's going to go next, so he's going to get that dark blue, light green, and the dark yellow against Bill. So Bill's going to get his brown. And we got the hits, but we got a uh, no damage, so we got lucky there. And there was no diamonds rolled either, so no effects. All right, then we're back over to our characters. So what do we want to do? Let's go with Evelyn. She's going to attack that dog again, see if she can potentially eliminate him before he gets to go. So he, she gets the light green, light blue. She's going to get that orange. And she's going to go ahead and spend one of her tokens to be able to re-roll it if its value doesn't come up that she likes and then the dog will get his tan come on Evelyn all right so she definitely hits him no problems there and she can reroll that and take the higher number so it's two damage either way but that's still pretty good all right so the first dog cannot move dog number two is going to go after Evelyn so it's going to turn around and attack her so it's going to get the blue and green die and the light yellow and then Evelyn gets a white die for defense so it's going to change its targeting and it's going to switch over to Joan which it is not in range of her at currently so it'll resolve the rest of the attack it is going to hit Evelyn and it'll do one damage to her Then we are on to dog number three, who is going after Joan. So it's going to move one, two, three, four over there. Then we're going to go ahead and gather the dice. So it's going to get a dark green, the light blue, and light yellow. And Joan will get her tan. All right, so no successful hit on the enemy. So the attack does not do any damage. Then we're back over to our characters to go next. So, so far we have Bill to go. He still has to go. So let's go ahead and attack. Wait over there. Maybe we'll get lucky and do some more nice damage like we did last time. So he is going to move behind Wade. And that'll get him the, the big die there. And he's going to spend his last token there to gain that additional green to try to help him out. And then Wade will get that dark brown. Come on, Bill. All right, so Bill definitely got the hit, but it only does one point of damage because Wade blocked some of it. So, but some damage is better than no damage, so I will take it. Evelyn will be the last member to go. So she, again, can target. She will move one over and target Wade since she's behind him. So she's going to get the light green, dark, or light blue. She'll spend that token again to re-roll the damage, hopefully. And she gets the light orange. So come on, Evelyn. And it's a miss. So no luck there. And he would have blocked quite a bit on that anyways. So again, we'll roll off and see. No other damage effects. So we're back at the top with our characters. So before Wade goes, Bill's gonna go again and see if he get can do any more damage. So again, he's gonna get that dark die with the light blue and light green. And a miss, oh man, that could have been huge. 
All right, so then Wade is going to turn around there and go after Bill. Wade gets that dark blue die and the light green. Bill gets the brown and the dark yellow. So Bill's going to dodge one, one star, so that is enough to avoid the attack. And he does trigger the diamond effect, though, so one of the guard dogs is going to attack that's adjacent. Dog number three is going to go after Joan. So she, he is going to have the dark green, light blue, and light yellow. And then Joan will get her tan. And it's a complete miss on the dog's part, so no damage there. Moving back over to our characters, uh, Maddox is going to go again. With the dog, that one's crippled one still. Let's go ahead and go after dog two with Evelyn, though. She's going to go ahead and start off by moving behind him again. And then she's going to attack. So she's going to get the dark yellow. She'll go ahead and do that again if, if she can connect. Then she'll get to roll that second one. We'll just roll it with it. And the dog will get the tan. And again, no luck on Evelyn. She's just having a rough time there. All right, then it's over to the dogs. So dog number one can't do anything. Dog number two is going to move. One, two, three. And attack Evelyn as that is her target. So he gets the dark green, light blue, light yellow. And Evelyn or Joan's going to get her tan. And it's a miss. So then dog number three, same attack. And also a miss, but is going to change targets on Joan. So Evelyn will be the target for that one. Then we're back over. We have Joan and Maddox to go left. So Joan is going to attack dog number three and see. Well, she's, let's see if she can finish off dog number two. So she's going to get that dark green, light green. And she gets that. The dog gets the tan. And it's a miss. No luck. But she can use the diamond to re-roll. So let's do that. And this one is a hit. Nice. And she gets another diamond that she can't apply anywhere. But she's going to do two damage to the dog. And finish that one off. So that'll move over to her board. She's going to get that. So Maddox is going to go ahead and drop back. And try to squirt gun our guy over there so he's going to get that light blue and dark green die and it's still at the side so he's going to get the dark yellow and our enemy will get the brown and no luck he missed all right so then again the end of the round and a four so no effect and we're starting a new round now. So we're going to try with Maddox again because it would really help if we could get him into one of those traps. So let's see what happens here. All right, so we got it. We got the one star we needed to get him in there. And we got three diamonds as well. So we can do some extra stuff. So we're going to get the three damage from the attack. The two diamonds can be spent on the effect. That'll add an additional damage. We get one from the holy water. And he does get pushed because of the third diamond. We can stumble him in there and sets off the trap as well, which is more than enough to finish him off. So weight is down. Nice. That's, that's a big help there. He's going to go ahead and as his last action, he's going to go build another firework. And that's that. Then we're on to the dogs to go. So our dog here is uncrippled at this point and ready to move off and terrorize some more. So it's going to move after Maddox. So one, two, three, four, five, and attack him. So it's going to get the dark brown lights or that and the light yellow. And Maddox gets that. And it, he does dodge that one effect, so the dog misses, which is huge. That would have done three more damage, almost finished him off. Very lucky there. 
Moving over to the other dog, it's going to go ahead and move. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Oh, should be there. And it's going to attack Evelyn. So there's those two. And she gets the white. And it does connect. Does two damage to her. And it's on, it latched on, so not good. She only has one hit point left. And that dog is stuck on her. So then we'll move back over to our guys. The Maddox is gone already, so our other characters are going to have to get in there and do some damage. With Evelyn, she'll go ahead and go first. Maybe she's going to get lucky here. She'll go ahead and move behind the dog so she can do some extra damage. She gets dark yellow. She'll get the green and light blue, and the dog gets the tan. And she hits. Very nice. The dog is going to target her, but it already is, so we're good there. And she's going to do three damage to the dog. All right. Then we are on next, so Bill's going to go. He's going to swing on over here and try to, to take care of some of that. So he gets both of those, and he gets the light orange die. Come on, Bill. Bill also hits and finishes off that dog. And finally, Joan's going to go. She is going to, she could either risk it, try to finish that dog off, or she's going to go ahead and move over instead and use her ability to heal... Evelyn, so she rolls this and heals her too. So that helps a little bit. That will end the round, so again we'll roll. No effect, and we're back to the top of the order. So with that, um, we're going to have Maddox go again, and he's going to use his bottle rockets. Why not? Let's see what happens. So he has two of them. He gets to use both of them at once. He's going to get a light blue plus his dark green die. So we'll go ahead and roll two sets. And there's only one enemy out there, otherwise normally you would have to randomize. And it also gets a light green each, and the tan for both of them. So let's see what happens. Come on, Maddox. Both of them were mid, nope, but we got one here. It's going to do one damage, so that is enough to finish that dog off. And then let's find out what happens here. So we'll flip this over. We have defeated all the monsters. So then we're going to proceed to reading 1-5. Five, five. Each family member looks on in disbelief, remaining motionless other than their rapid, heavy breathing. Joan is the first to move, and she quickly searches the unconscious, heavily perspired man for a key, but finds nothing. She wipes her hand off before giving the limp body one last kick in the kidney region. They have a few seconds to compose themselves before racing up the dimly lit, musty stairs. And that's where our mission concludes. And there are a couple of things we get, a couple of equipment cards to, to help us out again to move on to the next scenario. And uh, then we will also calculate the XP and all that as well. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful in deciding whether or not you want to back this game. I would definitely recommend it for people that like RPGs and, and dungeon crawlers. It definitely fit the need for that. And it has a lot of meat and depth to it. As you guys could see, there was a lot of decisions and choices to make. A lot of different things that the characters can do. And this is just the first scenario. So the characters are going to be able to upgrade items get different skills and different sets, working on different equipment and different things to really expand their, their different experience throughout the, the story. So like I said, this is definitely one that's on my radar. I'm looking forward to playing this game further once it is done and produced. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there. I'm sure they would love to hear from you as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it, and I try to take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. If you enjoyed this video, if you like what I do, also please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel, as it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and bring these games to you guys. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.